Hi guys, this is SDJRSNF88 speaking and welcome to the start of a new and exciting micro layout project. So first of all, I hope you're doing safe and well in these uncertain times. It uh, really is a bit of a surreal experience that I'm sure you would all agree. And uh, for many of us, we have a lot of extra spare time on our hands, which uh, for many of us modellers, we thankfully um, have the hobby itself we can sort of devote a bit more time into. And uh, I'm working on uh, the Railway Modeler magazine from home and um, on my free time and evenings, I've been cracking on with a number of modelling projects I've been wanting to get on with, including this. Now, this baseboard here I constructed shortly before moving down to the Railway Modeler office and originally it was going to be for a, another World War I layout, but it never really got off the ground. Anyway, uh, with the recent addition of the uh, Fry Sentinel, which I recently built, uh, and spurred on by a number of images which surfaced on a Facebook group called Micro Layouts uh, of the Summerdale Fry's Chocolate Factory site, uh, I came up with the idea of trying to recreate uh, basically that local landmark in model form. Now I travel across the main road uh, which this railway once crossed over uh, many times to get to the Avon Valley Railway and basically you've got uh, Canesham Station on the right and the factory on the left and the railway used to cross over the road from the station and into the factory site through sort of a gateway uh, in the high stone wall. And the scene really sets itself off perfectly for building a micro layout. So I thought, wouldn't it be a good idea to try and create it in model form? Now, this is the first time I've actually decided to build a layout that's actually based on a real location from real images. Um, Amiens 1918 is based on inspiration from a number of images, uh, as is Argon Forest and many of the other micro layouts I've built. I've sort of found images that I've taken for inspiration, then sort of created a, a sort of a scene that would be perfect for that area, but it's not based on one set location, it's based on many all blurred together. However, this layout is based on a real location. Um, but although it's going to be based on a real location, it's not going to be 100% accurate. I'm one of those people that if it looks right, then it's right, and I'm sure you would agree as well. Uh, sometimes you could just get too bogged down in getting the right drain cover for, for the road or something, or the right sort of colour of paint on the fence. But this has just got to sort of be sort of an inspired uh, layout based on real images. So I'm really, really excited about this project. So without further ado, uh, let's talk a bit about the baseboards. So the baseboards for the layout are constructed from three separate boards in the scale model scenery range. These are his large diorama boards. So we have two of the BB001s, these are used for the fiddle yard, and the BB010 board which forms the scenic section in the centre. Now these boards are not designed to be joined together, but with a bit of modification uh, we've managed to do so. So I used the holes which are on the ends of the 001 boards and lined them up uh, with the centre board and then drilled them through. We then got some extra screws and then bolted the two ends uh, to either side of that board. To add a bit of strength we added this L-shaped bit of batten to the top and this will also form a handy mounting point for the lighting rig. It's a very very simple design, there's basically two fiddle yards, so the fiddle yards are double the length of the actual scenic section, but it means that a train could be hidden at one end, then proceed through the scenic section and be hidden completely in the other end before then returning back. So what we're going to do now is take a closer look at the scenic section, which is of course in the centre of these two boards. So this is what will be the main scenic section and as you can see I've already started to build up the landforms. Now the fiddle yard to the right is where Canesham Station would be too and the fiddle yard to the left is where the Fry's Chocolate Factory was and this little scene here captures where the railway crossed over from the station to the factory over the main road. 
So to the right of the scene, we will have a little car park with uh, billboards. This is obviously all based from uh, pictures of the site when the railway was in action. And there was a little uh, car park here with a couple of cars in with a little sort of Great Western fence, which ran along the edge of the track, which is almost like a mini platform in a way. Uh, this is of course now all been buried and covered up with tarmac for the main car park for Canesham Station. Behind the track, again on the right hand side, is sort of a, a bit of a, a wasteland. Uh, there's a you know, bit of a grass area with lots of weeds and shrubs, which then leads into sort of a little wooded area. And of course the wooded area will help blend in the entrance to the fiddle yard on the right along with the billboards. This wooded area then will cover up the whole of the back scene and create a tree arch over the road. And this is another reason why I chose this particular scene is there's going to be a road on here uh, and also it gives me the option to use the uh, optical illusion, the, scene, uh, the sense of depth again, like uh, I've used on um, Argonne Forest and of course on Amiens 1918, where I can sort of blend the road going off into the distance. And again, I'll be cheeky and use my picture of the lane uh, to sort of give the feel of this sort of the older style of road, because um, this layout will be sort of set in the 50s and 60s, so the road would have been a bit narrower then, and there wouldn't have been um, many of the road markings in place. They were added at a later date. So a tree arch will blend uh, a picture of that road uh, onto the back scene there. And you can see I've already started to sand down uh, the foam board to build up this sort of uh, hill. Because the road is on a, on, a, on a gradient, the track is laid flat across, and it sort of levels out just where the track's to, and then it dips down again. And I've tried to recreate this with the foam, so there's been a lot of sanding already gone ahead there. Then to the left of the layout, we have the entrance to the factory, and as you can see, we got the iconic walls. Now these will be covered up with uh, Metcalf um, brick paper. I was tempted to use um, like wheels and ratio um, plaster card, uh, but there's a distinct curve to this wall, and uh, the plaster card's quite thick, and it probably wouldn't have held in place, especially on these foam back pieces that I plan to use and you know, building up the area behind it. Uh, and I've got plenty of uh, Metcalf paper sheets left over from previous projects, so it's a good excuse to use them. And you know, when they're weathered up and there's been a little bit of detailing added to them, they really do um, look pretty good. So it's a nice, simple, uh, easy option to use. So I'll create uh, the walls. The walls have got a sort of a stepped effect to them, so I've got to cut all that out and uh, recreate that. And then I'll have the brick paper on the front. I then got to build the two gate uh, pillars, which uh, were on either side of the track. Um, and as well, of course, uh, sort of recreate the iron gates that are on there, which were obviously closed off uh, when the railway was not in operation. Again, this will all be covered with woodland. Uh, the railway then went off into, again, a tree arch, which, as you know, I've, I've created on many of my other railways to sort of hide them going into the fiddle yard, which makes it another ideal sort of subject for a micro layout. So an, another tree arch will be created again with the woodland scenics uh, foliage, and that will hide the train going off into the factory. But that's not all what I've been working on. As you can see, we've got some track in place and I have been um, figuring out the control system, which we'll take a closer look at now. So one of the other things I've been working on is, of course, the control system. Uh, like Winter's End, my uh, wrapping paper box micro layout, I'm going to be using a block signalling DC shuttle system with speed control. Now the product code is SS2A and I'll pop a little link in the description below to one of these units. And of course my tutorial on how to set one of these uh, units up. It's a very, very simple uh, little controller. You just simply plug it into the mains with a uh, 12 volt uh, 1 amp power supply, uh, connect it to the tracks, and then you put a little uh, cut in either end and you solder across a little diode, which obviously detects where the train's to. So hopefully any second now, the uh, Sentinel should depart from the station. There we go. So this is where Canesham Station would be to this fiddle yard end. And it's going off across the road now and into the factory where it will hit the diode at the other end and come to a stop. So the idea is I've left um, a gap at this end so it'll be pushing the van so the vans will be in front of the locomotive and then of course when it returns back it'll be pulling them and I've obviously positioned uh, the, uh, the gap in the track to allow for that. Uh, the gap itself is uh, quite large for the Sentinel. Uh, the reason being is as you can see we've got another Hardy's Hobbies body kit here. This is one of his uh, Hunslets I believe or Hudswell sorry, Hudswell Clark 
and uh, basically this is also going to be a Fry's locomotive, completely fictitious of course, uh, but I had the body going, I thought it would be nice just to have another little Fry's locomotive to complement it, so basically uh, the idea is that the uh, production was ramped up and they needed another locomotive. And basically this little gap on the left here where the Sentinel comes to a stop, I've made large enough for a slightly larger loco, so this one, and also Pannier tanks and uh, 08 shunter which were also seen uh, working to and from the factory as well. So as you can see the Sentinel is just coming back and it'll wait there for another 30 to 40 seconds before departing back into the factory again. So without further ado I'm going to flip the camera around and I'll uh, show a few clips of the locomotive uh, passing through what will be the uh, scenic section. So I hope you enjoyed this first update on the Fry's Chocolate Factory Railway. I'm really, really pleased with um, sort of the progress so far, um, and it's really starting to sort of take shape with the landforming and other things. Um, the shuttle system going, uh, which is a you know a great relief as uh, you know electronics is not my forte. Uh, but hopefully now that I've sort of got the basic shape, I can really crack on with some of the the iconic features such as the walls and other things. And of course, it will change this uh, rather dull white and grey scene into something a bit more colourful. So hopefully uh, you'll be able to join me next time uh, where hopefully I'll have a bit more progress on the layout. But for now um, stay safe and uh, keep yourself occupied and uh, as always this has been SDJRSNF88 speaking and thanks for watching.